Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies with Man once again, and today we are doing another manga review. Now today we're going to be reviewing Sailor Moon Volumes 1 and 2. Now Sailor Moon is written by Naoko Takeuchi, and it's published by Kidansha, as you guys can see right there in the pink and blue. And the demographic here is shoujo. Now the genres here are fantasy and magical girl. Um, I guess you could say it's urban fantasy. And because it's a magical so girl story, it is equivalent to a battle shonen, but it's not exactly, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's it's very like similar, but it's not exactly the same type of story. And adaptation wise, this does have an anime, which is really popular. I think it became popular here in the 80s and then the 90s and in Latin America, same thing. It was really popular in the 80s. And then in the 2000s, I think they remastered it in rebroadcast it or something like that and the premise here is basically that this girl here usagi something i can't remember her last name um finds this cat with this like moon thing on his forehead and she gets granted superpowers she is the pretty guardian or the 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 sailor guardian of justice and love or something like that and she has the powers of the moon, whatever that means. Uh, and then from there, it evolves into a kind of like gather the crew storyline. And then from there into the kind of like first big climactic battle against the dark and crouching evil that these girls have to defend us against. Overall, I did enjoy reading this book and I never felt that the book um, was boring or bad in any way, but I do have some complaints or critiques and I think that they just stem from two different things. One, the fact that I'm not nostalgic for this series. I didn't watch the anime and maybe the anime is better than the manga, I'm not really sure, but I'm not nostalgic for it. So this is very much like my first introduction to the story and I realize that there's a lot of hype, which is reason two. And the reason, the fact that there's so much hype means that I was going with the idea that this was going to be an amazing, super awesome story. And it just didn't feel like that. And this is a very like above average story, but it's not in any way the most amazing thing ever. Right. And a lot of people do make it seem like that just because it is so popular and it means so much to so many people's, you know, youth. Now, I completely understand that because my favorite anime, there, there's two of them, it's Naruto or Saint Seiya, and both of those are immensely meaningful to me and mean, like, thousands of things to me because I grew up watching them. So I definitely understand that. But, I don't know, it, it just felt like there were some issues here or there's there was stuff that was bad or maybe not bad but that wasn't that great that kind of dimmed the enjoyment that i had for the series so we're gonna you know take a little bit of a deeper dive into that now that we're gonna actually start the review so let's just jump into it here the plot line is okay it's well, actually i would say it's good i do enjoy the whole like running around town trying to collect all of the other guardians i did enjoy that i thought it was really fun and i enjoy how each guardian is a different personality of course they're not really personalities as much as they are archetypes, like, which is, okay, cool. It, it, very similar to Power Rangers. There's, like, the quirky one, the leader, and then the smart one, and then, like, the other two, whatever they may be. I, I didn't mind that. I thought it was fun. It was enjoyable. Really good read. There was also these kind of, like, interesting Monster of the Week setup, where each chapter was dealing with a different bad guy. And these bad guys were actually beat really easily. And that was kind of like where my first problem was. It's that every battle was literally won because <laughs> Usagi got a power up. Or, or, or like a, a new suit or a new tool that she won from a game machine. It's actually a very interesting concept. Like, okay, we're going to use this game machine to explain what the background is but it was really boring in the sense that like none of the fights actually meant anything like to give you an example in a fight in black clover every fight asta has is a fight for his ideology and for his right to live right he's for his right to be part of the magic knights every time it's like him a boy that has nothing to his name except 
his brawn, you know, his, his own body that he works really hard to maintain at top tip shape and his like luck, the, the fact that he managed to get anti-magic. And those things, as well as the background that he has of being a poor orphan from the boonies of the kingdom, is always put up at stake against a royal or someone with really strong magic or something that needs to be overcome. And the whole battle is about Asta both fighting for himself and his survival, but as well for his friends and for his ideology, for the fact that he can be this great wizard king, even if he doesn't have magic, through hard work and determination. We didn't get any of that in this um, story. Now, I, I understand that Asta and Black Clover is a very modern shonen compared to this rather old school shoujo, and maybe this is a precursor to a lot of the modern ideas that we have, but it was still boring, and it's the first time that I experienced this story, and everyone makes it out to seem really amazing and this was the first issue that i encountered the fights are boring and they don't actually have any sort of growth for usagi except in terms of her power levels but she doesn't actually earn her power level how, how her power level up in any meaningful way the only thing that she's good at is playing video games now that's the the big issue here the other thing is that even with her power-ups sometimes she lost or she got in trouble in some other way and she had to be saved by this guy. And then that kind of like started a romance subplot that I thought didn't really make that much sense. Like they were attracted to each other because of like plot reasons and there's like world building aspects that tie to that. But like they call it the power of love and the reason like they, they, they find each other and they help each other is because of love. But it's like it's not love you just met <laughs> like how does that work i i don't know it was just not that great but i did enjoy the episodic uh power rangers feel that it had where i guess power rangers feels like this more than anything but it was in general it was fun it just i felt the plot line was missing something but you know volume two was actually a lot better than volume one once they finally met everyone and the plotline started to evolve from this kind of monster of the week thing to find this thing and then protect it from the evil that's coming. I did enjoy that part a lot more, but, uh, you know, just the fights were still boring. Now, characters wise, it's a little tough. I didn't like Usagi at all. There was this problem with her and it's that she doesn't feel like she deserves to be powerful. She's a very average person. And in fact, actually... She's so average that she's not really enjoyable as a person. Like, the only redeeming quality she has is that she's cute. Besides that, she's not smart. She's not um, able at anything. She's not good at getting grades. She's not a hard worker. She's uh, not particularly empathic. She doesn't have a strong bond with anyone. Like, everything about her is very middle of the road. And it's kind of is not enjoyable because again if we're comparing to battle shonen all of the battle shonen protagonists in most cases unless they're like the anti-hero type of main character have something heroic or meaningful about them and it's kind of weird because they are supposed to be everyman characters they're supposed to be people that you can impose yourself onto so that you can feel like you're part of the story and so that their story and their growth is your story and your growth so I don't see why this couldn't happen here. I just couldn't connect with Usagi. You know, like if we run through a list of shonen protagonists, you know, I can I can uh, identify it with the fact that Deku wants to, you know, chase a dream that is impossible. I can identify with the fact that Asta wants to overcome obstacles that are like <laughs> basically impossible because he doesn't have the necessary natural talent needed to do so which is the same as Deku more or less I can identify with Naruto's desire to be recognized because you know as an immigrant I and growing up in the U.S. I was kind of ostracized but also like I wanted to become part of the you know accepted group of people whatever I can identify with Goku's desire to be the strongest or to be the main person to be the 
guy that everyone looks up to. Cool. I can't identify with any of Usagi's traits because she doesn't have any. She is obsessed with love, which is actually kind of a negative trait because there's no one that she actually loves. The, the guy that she loves, Tuxedo Mask, is a random ass dude that sh shows up, saves her once, and then she's like obsessed with him. Like, he didn't really even save her. He just kind of like caught her when she fell or something. But it's just kind of like, no, I, I don't think that Usagi's like character is any meaningful kind of thing. I didn't really like uh, the tuxedo mask either. He doesn't have any meaningful character development. He's just kind of like the mysterious man in a suit. <laughs> and, and then he turns out to be this super intelligent guy. And it's like, Usagi, why are you interested in this guy? He's nothing like you. There's nothing about him besides him looking cute and you thinking like, oh my God, he's so awesome looking that is attractive based on, like he's just a mysterious dude and that's actually kind of creepy more than it is attractive and all the other side characters were okay but they're very archetypal there's like the quirky friend the side the uh which is the occultic girl i think uh it's sailor mars there's the um best friend and then there is the really powerful girl that is like really confused which is sailor jupiter and then who else is there? Oh, and then the smart girl. Nothing about them is all that particularly amazing either, but they are more interesting because they do have traits that you can identify with. The bad guys are all mustache twirling villains, although there is a certain element of like, oh my God, why are they evil? What the heck's going on? Who is in charge? Who's the bad guy? Who isn't the bad guy? Who's kind of getting controlled by the other people? That was okay. I did enjoy that. But in general, the characters here were just kind of mildly weak. Uh, they weren't particularly meaningful. I didn't connect with any of them. And, you know, it wasn't bad. Like, I know there's something that's going to be good later on. It's just like, it's going to take me a little bit to get there. And I'm okay with that. I, I, I knew that I was not probably going to like all of this stuff really off the bat. But... I just wish that there was a better beginning here in terms of characters. Um, Story-wise, it was okay. Character-wise, it was not that good. World-building-wise, which is probably the best part here, it was actually pretty interesting. I did enjoy it. Um, It's not amazing by any means, but it is really cool, and I really like the whole Moon Empire, Darkness Empire, Earth Empire thing that was going on, and that kind of whole, like, Star-Cross lover lovers thing. I, I really enjoy that. That kind of whole, like, Romeo and Juliet, they shouldn't be together, but they still love each other, and so they are going to try to do whatever they can, even if it means tragedy, because although it is, if you sit down and think about it, immensely selfish, because you're basically, in the, in the case of Sailor Moon, you're dooming two full planets to death by being in love. It's something that, like, is romantic, and, and it's kind of like, oh my god, you're so in love that all of that doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of crazy but it is you know uh, interesting and also kind of like uh that there's so many questions about the powers like where do they get these powers how does it actually work like is it like in saint Seiya, where the energy from the stars reaches them because they're connected to that planet or star in some way or is it just like they just call themselves that and then just like associate with a planet even though there's nothing about it that's connected or how does it really work is it mythological because venus had water powers and sailor jupiter had thunder powers but like mythologically venus doesn't control water and jupiter does control lightning so how does that work what is the connection there or is it just a huge mishmash of different things um, I'm also interested in the Moon Empire people because they seem to be like elves, like they have pointed ears, right? Um, but they don't now because they're like all in on Earth. And then the bad woman has like the, the bad lady, the, the evil person has the pointed ears. So I'm interested in seeing where that comes from. But yeah, I mean, the world building was the most interesting part, mostly because there's a lot of questions that felt like they were going to be answered soon. And I just want to know what the answers are. And I could just Google this, but 
that's boring so i'm not gonna do that um and then the art here is not my favorite but it is pretty solid and i do actually enjoy how it looks the character designs are pretty nice i do like it and i like that it's not in any way fan service heavy which is it's cool but i mean it's also because one it's old and two it's aimed at girls and showing off girl bodies doesn't really seem to be like what shoujo is really about a lot of the shoujo characters are a lot more like muted in their femininity except for the fact they're all really cute so it's kind of really interesting to see how the art and the fan service kind of go hand in hand there's a lot of like fan service here but it's not for guys it's a lot of like sparkling and the guys looking broodingly away and kind of looking all pretty and stuff which i think is interesting but obviously it doesn't it's not for me it doesn't do anything for me but it's a lot more muted and toned down and kind of like i don't know it's just very different and i i, I do see it as fan service in the same vein that like sexual comedy stuff is fan service for boys or for shonen but it's just so interesting that it's so different and i'm curious because i haven't actually experienced that much fan service in all the other shoujo that i've read aimed at girls uh, so i'm curious to see how it has evolved over the years and how it kind of works now i mean i've seen free like the the swimming anime so i know like like attractiveness body like proportion stuff fan service does exist but free wasn't really a girl like girl centered anime or a, an anime that was meant specifically for girls right so it's kind of different and i'm kind of interested to see how that kind of evolved but there was not actually any like male oriented fan service in this story so if you want to read that go for it uh rating wise i'm not sure i did write this down as a four out of five but now that i've like stopped uh, talked about it f like in person and kind of organized my thoughts a little bit more i do want to score it lower but i i did have a lot of issues with it but none of them actually were bad it was just kind of like it's a product of its time it's old now and i'm comparing it to modern stuff it's not exactly fair i don't know where the kind of like correct score would lie so i think a 3.5 out of 5 you know somewhere in between the two different scores that i wanted to give it is fair it's definitely above average and it has a very interesting uh, concept and because it is the precursor or maybe the most famous out of all of these shoujo stories i feel that it's a disservice to give it a really bad rating so there we go 3.5 out of 5 overall i did enjoy reading it and i was never bored reading it it's just that some of the things that i read didn't really jive with me in the sense that they didn't make me care about the characters and to me characters are always uh maybe not the most interesting but the most important aspect of reading I, I my favorite thing is uh world building i don't really mind if the plot is weak as long as the characters and the world building is great and in this case the characters were just not that good now do i recommend this title yeah sure i think it's a fun title it's a classic you can't go wrong with reading classics it's just like if this is your first time reading it make sure to go in with an open mind and don't think that it's going to be amazing just because everyone likes it it's not necessarily true similar titles though nirvana and fushugi yugi which is another book that i just recently read uh, during the whole three days that hell froze over here in texas um i read sailor moon and fushugi yugi i i like them both and i think they kind of fit together fushugi yugi isn't really a like magical girl thing nirvana is though so you know there you go now that's it for me i hope you guys enjoyed this video sorry it did go a little bit long but i just had a lot of things to say so thank you guys very much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did please leave a like subscribe and comment down below let me know what you thought um if you disagree with me on anything please let me know and we can have a civil discussion down in the comments thank you guys very much for watching